Welcome to Mindless Entertainment. It is I, Jesse Milestone, coming to you on this Friday with both good news and bad news. The good news is uh, there's a Mindless Entertainment t-shirt right now. It is, a, it is brand spanking new, just launched, and you can own it today. There's a link below, and we'll talk more about that a little bit later, but it's super exciting. It's a great thing to have in this world, and we need good things in this world, because the bad news is I saw Solo. I did. I didn't spend my own money on it, but I did go see Solo. And, um, alright, so here we go. Solo is the best movie of the year, clearly, hands down. Uh, Alden Ehrenreich has just completely replaced Harrison Ford in my life as who Han Solo is now. If you believe that, you're a fucking moron. Get off this channel. Um, as I put in the titles, this, this, is going to this is going to have all of the spoilers. All of the spoilers forever in this video. So in case you didn't read, I'm telling you now, you have no more excuses. I'm no longer responsible for your well-being. Okay, so here it goes. I like I have to psych myself up for this because this is gonna be this is gonna be tough for me, guys. This is gonna be tough. Um, I have a very deep personal connection to the character of Han Solo, so this is this was not easy for me to for me to deal with, for me to process. And I know a lot of you aren't seeing it, so um, because it's easy for me to organize and the easy way through, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to go sort of somewhat chronologically. Um, and yes, guys, this will probably have like more yelling and expletives than your average video. If you're not sure what I mean by that, go see the uh, Last Jedi review and you'll get a better sense. Or just keep watching this and you'll find out. Okay, um, so the very first moment in this movie when I let out a long sigh or a you gotta be kidding me happened pretty much immediately. Um, you had your long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, but we know they don't do opening crawls for their, you know, Star Wars stories movies. So instead, they had a completely unnecessary title card. Completely unnecessary. They title card it, blue text that tells you, oh, the galaxy is in chaos. It is a lawless time or some bullshit like that. Which is stupid, uh, one, because nothing I told you in the title card. Oh, it's a lawless time. There are street gangs, you know, in Corellia, which is a shitty planet full of street gangs that also build ships. Great. Um, first of all, we know, like, honestly, the majority of people going to see this movie already know that. Okay, there are kids. Great. Uh, you're gonna pick all this up in the first five fucking minutes. There's nothing in that title card that wasn't in the five fucking minutes of the film. So why are you wasting seconds out of my precious life to do this? Also, secondly, the galaxy is in chaos? It is a lawless time? Uh, no, it's fucking not. This is like height of the empire right here, right? And this is a very, I've been trying to parse together this whole timeline because it doesn't, it doesn't quite gel totally in my head how some things here, there, there, whatever. But at this point, Han Solo is a good, you know, 17 to 25 who knows it's not really clear it's really unclear and there's a little passage of time in the beginning but the empire has been established you know for a good long time the time of, of unrest and chaos and war yeah obviously there's still some going on in some places but most of that time was in the changeover from the republic to the empire that shit already happened like movies ago um so so no it's it's not a time of, of all this unrest it's actually quite a, a rel outside of the rebellion it's a relatively peaceful time. It's, yeah, okay, some planets are like, we don't really like being overruled by these people or being enslaved. But honestly, yeah, I mean, you can have peace time in the time of dictatorships, and that's what you got right now. So that's some bullshit right there. Okay, that's dumb. That's bad. Great. Now, enter movie. Very first thing that happens, right? We see Han boosting a speeder. Little Han Solo. His face looks like he's about to shit his pants. Great. We start there. Little Han Solo shit in his pants. Takes his speeder back to where, you know, he's a, apparently a runaway that we learned from the, from the title card. He's a runaway um, who lives at this, sh you know, in this shitty shithole with this crime boss, whatever, um, who's called Lady Proxima, which we learned from the title card and because people say it multiple times at the beginning of the movie. So once again, completely unnecessary title card. So he gets back there and immediately, oh, he, who does he run into? Amelia Clark's character, Kira. Okay, I have to stop right now. We just have to start with this right here, right now. Kira, spelled Q-I apostrophe R-A, pronounced Kira. I have a problem with this. I don't know if you do. I'm mean, I'm just being nitpicky, whatever. I have a problem with this. Most names in the Star Wars universe are not normal people names. They're not. They're Han, Qui-Gon, Obi-Wan, Darth Vader, whatever. All right? We do have some normal names, like Luke and Ben and Leia, and those are spelled normally. Right? You don't spell Luke, L-Y-Q-P-Z-X-F, all right? When you spell it Kira, Q-I apostrophe R-A, you're like, ooh, that's some funky Star Wars. No, it's not, it's just Kira. 
You're trying to make her special. Like, I'm sorry, this is not, this is not a fucking, you know, cool, fun name. This is like some stupid girl named Kira who decides she wants to rebel against her parents when she starts wearing a lot of black eyeliner and black makeup and shit uh, when she's 16 years old. And she's like, oh, it's cute. All uh, right, punch me. All right, hey, now. Uh, like, that's that. That's just otherwise dumb like why I, that bothers me i have a problem with that. It's a problem with that. it bothers me all right so right away uh this fact that that han comes into his little shithole and um and he and kira and first thing they're talking about how they're gonna run away and build a life together right immediately that just ruins the next like 15 minutes worth of suspense that they're trying to set themselves up for why because the trailers so if you haven't seen the trailers i guess you were spared from that but if you have seen the trailers you know that han runs into kira Right? At some point on this fancy place, and she's like, you look good. A little rough around the edges, but good. In a way that, like, could be familial or could be meeting him for the first time. But either way, it is clear that this is, she ha if she's meeting, if she's if met him before, it hasn't been in a while. Um, and you know, you don't do that. It's not like if you've known someone your entire fucking life, because the whole, we're going to run away and have a shift together. Okay, so obviously, they're going to get separated in the beginning here. They're planning to run away. Okay, we can deduce all immediately that he gets out and she does not. Spoiler alert. That's exactly what the fuck happens. So, it takes away all the suspense from that immediate part because you're like that's probably what's gonna happen um oh and then we meet the boss and this was almost gonna be really cool right this was almost gonna be cool like oh my god this really crazy looking slug boss who un a boss who like curls out from the water and is covered in all these like jangly chains and shit and then she opens her mouth she sounds like a little old lady she's like a grandma i'm lady proxima Rah! like really fucking have some sense of creativity. Yeah. So that's stupid. And then it gets stupider because he has this little showdown. Okay, we can see him asserting himself. He gets, you know, hit with it. They're like, no one's going to hit me again. And then they're like, I'm going to shoot you. So he pulls this little gag of, I have a thermal detonator. Oh, that's a rock. No, it's not. It's arm. Like, okay, that was a ridiculously stupid thing to do, period. Also, it's just the whole like, oh, you can't stop me. Why? I'm holding a thermal detonator. Where have I heard that before? Oh, we can't make up our own little ruse. We can't make up something similar but different. We have to just copy an exact moment from Return of the Jedi. Because why would we bother writing things that are even remotely original when we could just borrow things that have already happened and nobody will notice? And if they do notice, we'll be like, haha, fan service, you're welcome. Fuck you. So all this shit happens, and and it's okay. You have a chase scene. All the all the like chasey actiony scenes are fine. They're fine. It's a fun chase. It's, and I actually, the one thing, there, there are a couple things this film does well. One thing I thought it did do well was the tone of the humor. I thought it, it, it captured what Star Wars humor is supposed to be. Uh, there's a lot of situational comedy in like, oh, this thing is supposed to work, and it doesn't. Um, and then there's like some dry wit and some snappy lines here and there. So that, they actually managed to do. Wow. Good job. It'd be great if you got anything else about this movie right. Uh, they did, like one or two other things. We'll get to those. But mostly, fucking no. Um. Han goes to the whole thing. She doesn't get. She doesn't get what he does. He's gonna join. He's the whole reason he's gonna go join the Empire, which is like a, again a stupid ass idea. I'm gonna join the Empire so I can learn how to fly, so that I can come back and rescue my girlfriend. Um, that's already like a terrible plan, but fine. He goes up to the guy, and two horrible things happen here. First thing is him saying, "I'm gonna be a pilot, best in the galaxy." That doesn't sound like a thing Han Solo ever would say. That sounds like a thing Luke Skywalker would say, because the way we've written Young Han, it's basically Luke Skywalker. Why? Because, God forbid, we should have a man that's actually, like, masculine and assertive and good at things. No, he has to be, if he's gonna be assertive at all, he's just a yuppie little naive bitch who hasn't been learned his place in the world yet. Because that's the only kind of man that's acceptable to womankind, apparently. And I, except I find it completely abhorrent in a sexual partner. So whatever. Uh, what, what do I know? Um, and then, of course, we get, this is how Han gets his name. Uh, Han, what's your last name? I don't have one. I'm alone. Ooh, okay, alone. Hmm, alone by yourself, single, solo! Really? Why can't his name just have been Han Solo? And this also doesn't make sense, by the way, which we'll get to later on. Uh, or fuck it, we'll just get to it now. Um, things that don't make sense. More things don't make sense in this, things that don't make sense in this movie, right? So Han is this, like, little runaway who's been on the streets since he's ten, but 
he does have a father that he knew because the whole bit with him, later with him and Lando, he's like, my dad used to build these ships. Like, wow, that's impressive that you remember that from like nine years old and before. Um, and so it begs all these questions, opens up all these questions. Why did you run away? Why did you leave home? What was wrong with your father? You don't have a relationship with him. Okay, but you also like haven't seen, you don't even know if he's alive. Is he alive? Is he dead? Who knows? What the hell? Is he, was he a bad father and just died early? Or was he a fine father and ditched you, ran out on you? Like what? It, all these fucking questions. And at that point too, okay, you, you were in a, you lived with your father long enough to be aware of the exact type of ship he was building. You had a fucking last name. Um, people who run away are not usually like, I will forsake my last name. I guess sometimes they do, but in this situation, it seems like, oh, oh, I gotta sign up for the army and they need a last name. Well, here's my last name because this has just always been my last name. Like, that's just, you have a fucking last name. So the fact that we're going to make up and just contrive this whole, and like this most on the nose way humanly possible. Like, Sol, you're alone. We'll call you Solo. <laughs> just to like cheapen everything else about his character forever. Every time Han said, talks about working alone, it's funny because his name is Solo and he got that name because he is alone. Like, no, the whole point is that you just instinctively know that. You don't have to call it out. That's his whole fucking movie, by the way. All the dialogue in this movie, like 90% of the dialogue is like, this is what exactly what I am doing right now. These are the thoughts that have just popped into my head, so I will voice them out loud for everybody's benefit, because none of the writers of this film have ever heard of subtext. Clearly not. Like, subtext just fucking not a thing. Like, they take this whole idea of, let's make Star Wars a kids movie, way too fucking far. Let's tell you everything. And even kids movies don't do that. Kids movies are chock full of subtext, because the parents have to have something to enjoy. I remember watching Ants when I was a little kid, and then watching Ants again when I was, like, in high school, thinking, holy shit, this movie is very, very sexual. Um, and that's the nature of things. All movies have, all decent movies have subtext. This subtext, none. Zero. Zero. And because the writers had no idea how to, how to write subtext, that complicates a whole lot of things with Amelia Clark's character, but we'll get to that. God, so, so he goes off, and then we get, like, a nice three years later, and he's on the ground in a war. Um, okay, what the fuck? Why is this happening? Oh, contrived plot, so that he can be in the right place to meet the right people, because if he was a pilot flying around, he wouldn't be on the ground meeting the people we need him to meet in order to for further along the plot. So how do we justify him getting kicked out of uh, the Navy? I got kicked out for having a mind of my own. That great line we heard in the trailer. Justified? No, not at all. Not justified, not paid off at all. I was kicked out for having a mind of my own, because I'm a rebellious teenager. Yeah. Like, that's who his character is. He's, he's literally Luke Skywalker with just, like, a little bit less uh, whininess and a little bit more annoying douchebagginess. Like, that's it. Not even good, fun douchebagginess. Just, like, annoying, pathetic douchebagginess. Like, if, 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 if Luke were just a little bit more confident that he could do the things that he wanted to do, because that's the only difference, is they were both yuppie and whining and all this stuff. It's just Luke didn't actually think he was going to get to do the things he wanted to do, and Han was like, I will! Watch me! Um, which also is not super Han solo -y in a lot of ways, too, because Han is very much, like, has always been the, you know, I have confidence on the outside, but I totally have no idea what the fuck I'm doing, and I'm okay admitting that! Um, at least to himself and probably Chewbacca. Um, and that's, I, you know... <sighs> That false bravado, that's like a false bravado. He doesn't have false bravado. He has like real naive bravado, which is stupid and unappealing as opposed to fun and charming. Um, so he's, and, and for some reason, the Empire is fighting these wars as if, it, as if it's World War fucking one. Like you have a World War one style trench in this movie. Why? No fucking clue. All right, so he like butt fucks his way into Woody Harrelson's crew after, oh, by the way, let's throw him in a pit and chain him to the wall for punishment, just like, Ha! Huh, the Rancor in Return of the Jedi, because we can't have original ideas. Enter uh, the stupidest way they could have thought of to team up him and Chewie. Um, they pulled, they actually, and that's the whole upsetting thing. Like, you guys, they pulled stuff for, in this movie from the EU. They did. They took ideas. They took some stuff. They preserved certain things. Um... In, in this, you know, like, constant ideas, you know, uh, in this film, and, and one of the most powerful ones I always thought was this whole Han saved Chewbacca by, uh, because Chewbacca was a slave and he was being beaten by the, Emp by some one of the Imperial troops and he stepped in and saved his life. You know, that was great. Uh, Chewbacca is a monster in a pit, and I'm gonna just speak Wookiees, uh, and, and we're gonna, oh, this pole that you could have knocked down this whole time, I'm just gonna be the one to show you how to do that, and now we're free! 
Stupid. Just fucking stupid. Um, so that happened, and it was dumb. So they go off, join Woody Harrelson's crew, and you have this character with, like, a bunch of extra arms who makes no sense and does not fit at all. Like, totally just rips you right out. I don't know who that voice actor was, but something about that character just didn't make any sense and didn't fit whatsoever in this nice little band of ruffians. Um... Uh, and so, like, the one, the first interesting thing that actually did cleverly, okay, so is not give everything away in the trailer. The trailer made it seem like this train job was going to be sort of the focal point of the movie. It's kind of the beginning. And so we go through the beginning, and forearm guy, pilot guy dies, and, um, and fucking, uh, Tandy Newton's character, who's, like, Woody Harrelson's life partner, uh, dies. So Woody Harrelson's Tobias. I might mention that later, so just be aware. Tobias Beckett. Anyone else? I didn't fucking learn their names, because who cares? Um, and, and it's, it's so weird that Han has this, like, visceral reaction when he comes up to take over flying the plane, uh, uh flying the ship, and the pilot dies. He has, like, this visual, oh my god, you're dead! And then Tandy Newton sacrifices herself, and he's like, oh my god, you're dead! I mean, this is, again, this is, I've been writing scams of the streets since I was ten years old! And really? Like, you've seen your, your brothers and sisters probably get tortured and murdered by your family. You shouldn't be like, oh my god, new people dying that I don't even know. I am so emotionally wrecked by this. You shouldn't be. All right, enter Enfys Nest, which is still the stupidest name ever and impossible to say. Um, badass. We know because it was all leaked that, oh, she's a woman, so big reveal, whatever. Spoiled over, so the whole, okay, we can enjoy the fact that, like, she's riding around, has a deep voice, and sounds like a dude. And is a total fucking badass. It's like, wrench this cargo from you fuck around, be awesome at stuff, be really good at fighting, be really fucking cool, and I'm like, all right, on board, I like this, I like this total rough and tumble, badass female character, villainous character, finally, a good female villain, because as we all know, they took Gwendolyn Christ Christie, made her Phasma, and fucking wasted that character, so now, okay, redemption, great, we have a female badass, hold that thought. We move along, we end up on gangster ship, and there's some things, okay, they did okay here. Gangster ship, looking like the, you know, Jabba's floating palace. I, I'll buy it. I'll buy into that. Uh, I actually kind of like Paul Bettany and, and has his crime boss dude, whose name I don't care about. Um... Oh, that is a good crime boss. And now we have Amelia Car of Clark's character comes back, right? Kira's back. Woohoo! Oh my god, Kira's back! Um, Kira's back, and obviously, like, some sort of sex slave, which is, again, doesn't make any sense. First of all, this has been, it's been three years. It's been only three years since, since they separated ways, and somehow in this time, she has managed to climb her way up to being, like, sort of the second in command, but also the sex slave for the boss here? It's very unclear what her actual role is and what her actual level of power is. Like, obviously, in three years, she's, like, mastered some form of, of Star Wars karate, which actually the, the type of thing that she does is a reference to a thing in a video game, but that's not important. Um, and so in three years, she's mastered all this mass amounts of badass arenas as, like, proper lady and whatever. Okay, fine. But again, very unclear. Like, are you a badass with a lot of agency and ownership of your, over your life and your choices, or are you a sex slave? Because clearly it's some... some form of whatever. So, alright, so we're gonna go off and we're gonna do other things and meet Lando. We have to meet Lando because we need a ship. He has a ship that we need. It's a very fast ship. We need his ship. Um, so we're gonna walk through this, like, <laughs> thing that looks exactly like the elephant graveyard in the beginning of The Lion King. Like, that shot, they have, like, this elephant skull with the tusks. It literally just looks like a live-action version of entering the elephant graveyard in The Lion King. So I don't know what the fuck that was about. Um, but now, okay, we're all talking about Lando's character. And once again, it's like, Amelia Clark, for, uh, she just, she's, she's good at all this stuff now, right? Little Mary Sue in here, just really fucking great at everything. Oh, let me walk into this world. I know everything about this world. And, fi and by the way, like, we have a character that we've been told uh, by the writer is pansexual, Lando. Um, so we have Amelia Clark come in, and the first thing she talks about is, like, how fucking sexy he is. And he, like, doesn't even speak to her a single time in the fucking movie. So, by all that, that great opportunity to have a lot of sexual chemistry flying and floating around, like, no, no, no. The only reason Lando is pansexual is for a really dumb reason, which we'll get to in a moment. So, um... What it turns out the whole time, all that needed to happen, because this is what's about to happen, is Amelia Clark had to go say, Hi Lando, do you want to help us on a job? And he would go, sure. No, we have to have this entire stupid Sabat game. The only reason we have it is so that Lando can cheat and win, and Han doesn't win the Millennium Falcon, therefore subverting all our expectations. Oh, how clever. Um... This does get paid off at the end of the movie, which I'm fine with. I'm not fine with the way that it's so contrived and how they set up the first game just so they can pay it off at the end. I'm also not fine with the fact that Sabacc, this wonderful game that we're all like, what the hell is this, is just, uh, is just basically poker. Um, I, I'm not okay with that. 
I'm not okay with the line of dialogue. I heard a story about you. I was wondering if it's true. All right, everything you heard about me is true. That's fine. Lando's saying that's fine. He sells it, right? And, but it's just Han. Like, I heard you did this. Yes, that's true. Like, the whole thing, and I get that I guess he was trying to come into this and play the dude, but it's just so, just such bad acting in that moment of like, let me uh, just tell you exactly everything. I just, again, I'm so fucking on the nose. The writing is fucking atrocious. And by the way, 50% of what comes out of Han's mouth is a question. Hey, hey guys, what's up? What's happening over here? Hey guys, what are we doing now? Hey guys, what's happening next? Hey guys, what are you thinking? Hey guys, what do you think we should do? Like literally, what the fuck? Are you, a, are you a human being? Are you an adult or are you a 12 year old child? Just, hey, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? I can't make any decisions for myself or do anything important. I just didn't know what's going on. Fuck you. So anyway, that game happens for no reason. Uh, Lando cheats and wins, and then they now they have a ship. Yay, it's the Money and Falcon. Uh, Han sees the Money and Falcon for the very first time. Enter forced fanfare so that we get a sense of gravitas that is not in, organically in the movie at all. Falcon does not really look like the Falcon yet. Of course, we have to, you know, beat it half to death in order to get there. That's fine. Whatever. That's fine. We're on the ship. Uh, Woody Harrelson's still here, by the way. Um, and, uh, and he's teaching Chewie how to play the little chessy game. And, and, great, okay, fine, that's like a cute little moment of, oh, look, Chewie learns how to play this game that he later gets really, really good at and offers to tear someone's arm out. And also there's dialogue that acts as foreshadowing, because literally everything Woody Harrelson says in this movie is blatant foreshadowing. Um, because why bother with good writing when you could just have, like, easy payoffs all written through your script to make yourselves look really clever? Um, and, and that's fine that he's teaching him how to play the game. What's not fine is the fact that the move that you see is, like, the literal exact same one from A New Hope. Again, with the creativity here. There are a billion other player pieces on this board. By a billion, I mean like 12. There are several other pieces on this board. Do fucking something else with another one, not just like, oh, hey, let's look. They probably honestly just lifted the footage out of A New Hope and retooled it and was like, boom, here you go. That was easy. We don't have to CGI any of this. Um, so that was fucking dumb. Uh, yeah, so we go to Kessel, because there's a whole, whole reasons. Who cares? Um, uh, underused, such an underused planet, right? Kessel, this planet we've heard about, this this desolate mining planet full of slaves and people coked out on spices and all this crazy shit, and we see barely any of it. Uh, that entire Kessel scene is caught by this mass robot revolt, because, oh yeah, L3! I was trying to overlook L3, but I cannot! This is, like, literally an SJW robot. Like, if you've been hearing about this and you were like, oh, I don't... It's not right. No, like, they actually, like, studied an SJW and wrote it into a robot. Like, no fucking kidding. This robot, the first time we see her, she's freaking out because there are robot battles happening. And she's like, no, this is inhumane. She's like a vegan losing her shit at a, you know, butcher shop or something. Um, and, and, and it's just like, and, and just in all of the ways, an obnoxious SJW. Like, not, not even just like, I believe in social justice, but like, I'm going to be a sassy, obnoxious, cunty bitch to you every second I get because, nah. And I do like the justification from Lando. Oh yeah, I would wipe her memory, but she has a great nav system in her head, so I can't. Fine, the only reason you tolerate this salty bitch. I get it. Whatever. So yeah, so we end up on Kessel, and she just like starts this robot revolt, and she's like, oh my god, it's my purpose in life, and okay. So this whole thing about let's liberate the robots, let's pull off all the restraining bolts, and now they're going crazy and revolting. First of all, uh, most robots, if you take off the restraining bolts, just keep fucking doing, doing what they're doing. We know this because most robots, as far as we know in this original Star Wars universe, don't necessarily have restraining bolts. That's not like... The thing, the whole thing was, oh, oh, we put one on, on R2, but we'll go get his memory wiped the next day. Uh, the assumption being, if we wipe his memory, we can take the restraining bolt off, because he's just gonna then do what we tell him to do, because he's a fucking robot. And look, I'm all for a movie about robot sentience and asking those questions, because those are actual real questions that, at some point in the development of our technology, as it's going, we are going to have to ask, and we are going to have to answer. Star Wars is not the vessel for that. Star Wars, and by the way, another, like, side-along, not-that-important bit, um, is not the place to address this. Right? Because then what? Oh, all this robot consciousness stuff just went away. Uh, however many years later when we have the trilogy. These things people don't think about. You're dealing with an existing franchise here. You're dealing with an existing timeline. You don't just get to make up new things, right? No, there was never a fucking conscient, like, robot revolt on Kessel uh, that had to do with robots, you know, uh, declaring for equal rights and shit like that. That's not a thing. That's not a part of the fucking Star Wars universe. Stop trying to make it one. Duh! It just, that fucking, that's, that stuff bothers me. Like, I'm okay with the with that idea, I'm okay with that. Just not in this fucking context. Oh, and then on the way to Kessel, by the way, we can't ignore this. We can't ignore this beautiful moment. This moment where Star Wars, where the solo movie pointedly fails the Bechdel test, which. I don't know if you know about this. Bechdel test, it's a thing. It doesn't really mean anything. It's just kind of a fun thing to look at a movie and be like, are there uh, at least two female characters with names? Do they have a scene alone together? And are they not talking about men in that scene? And, like, it's fine. Again, it doesn't really mean anything. It doesn't really mean anything that the movie sexes or it isn't or whatever. Um, it's just a fun little thing to do. But... <sighs> 
and and I'm okay with movies. I love ton. Most of my favorite movies fail the Bechdel test, like the original Star Wars. Who cares? Um, but it's just so funny to me that they actually they got so close, right? They took two female characters, if you want to consider the robot a female character, with names uh, L three and, and Kira, and you stuck them in a room together, and they pointedly talked about boys. Like, oh my god, uh, Han is so in love with you, and you're clearly committed to someone else. Like, yeah, I have, and like, I have the same problem, because Lando is like, so in love with me, and I'm so clearly not. Um, and that was like, a funny little di a side dialogue, and it was funny, because the whole, it was so ludicrous and absurd, like, obviously he isn't, come on. Um, but it was like, really silly the way she handled it with the, you know, then sometimes I think maybe, and then nah. And like that was actually one of the one of the funnier like the nice organic moments of humor in the in the video. Oh look who came to visit us, guys! The real Han Solo wants to say hi. This is my Han Solo, and he's very happy to be here. By happy, I mean he thinks I should give him more food, even though I just fucking fed him. Um, so that was stupid. Uh, so Kessel and all this and and like sort of weird like Chewie only goes away to save some Wookiees so that Wookiees can come help them and then comes back just because like really like the only reason he went away was so he could come back at the opportune moment and save the day just to create some more on screen tension or or you know drama because they didn't really have any um and then so somewhere in this whole fucking thing uh oh, by the way Lando has a million capes and we don't know why um that's that to me was a little like they mm, we'll get to this um. So L3 gets killed on the way back to all from all this, and Lando goes after him, her, and grabs her, and is this whole, the whole stuff that ensues between Lando and L3 lets you clearly know that, yeah, Lando was actually in fucking love with this robot, <laughs> but, which is, just doesn't, first of all, doesn't make sense to anything they've set up previously, and nothing they've set up previously has indicated this at all, and clearly, oh, the only reason we were told that Lando's pansexual is so we can accept the fact that he wants to have fuck, sex with a machine? Like, he wants to fuck a robot? That's... That's stupid! That doesn't make any fucking sense! Like, I... Again, like, robot sent you, you created robot sentience in this movie for no real reason, and then you had Lando wanna fuck robots for no real- like, that's just not a thing! Like, you're just- you're, you're just- again, you're doing more than you're supposed to be doing! You're supposed to be making a fun fucking movie for us to all enjoy, and you're bringing up all these big themes that you're not dealing with properly, you're not having real discussions about, and you're just introducing flippity-floppity just to be like, Oh god, look at how progressive we are! Like, you're not! You're fucking not! It's all fucking contrived bullshit meant to make, you know, all these idiotic, moronic teenagers happy because I can relate to that! I feel like a robot sometimes too! Fuck off! So that's the thing that bothers me. So, la la la, we get the spice, we do the whole Kessel Run thing. Um, I think that they, they actually t did a decent job of handling, like, this is why the Kessel Run can be done in a shorter distance. That's fine. You know, you had this weird monster cloud shit. I didn't really understand what they were going for there, but fine, fine, I'll take it. It's Star Warsy. it's silly. Um, I thought they went a little too hard with trying to recall the let's flying through the flying through the asteroid field and the Empire Strikes Back to the point of like using the actual music in it and all that. Like again, it's fine, it's fun, but and that's a great soundtrack, but can you have something original, please? Okay, the gravity well. The gravity well, that whole bit was a little cool until the solution. The solution was let's take some of this unrefined radioactive fuel shit and put it in our like fusion reactor and kaboom, we'll fly away. Um, if you heard, I remember the last shot. Star Wars is first a science fiction, it's first a fantasy film. Science fiction, yes, it has their elements of sci fi in it, but it's a fantasy film. It is a fantasy driven film, um, fantasy driven set of films with fantasy plot lines and all that kind of stuff, right? Stop trying to make science solutions happen because your science doesn't make any fucking sense. It's totally absurd if you did what he they did first of all all that shit would have exploded in his entire handling of it right and then of course when he fucking drops it in the ship's just gonna fucking explode it doesn't make any goddamn sense no fucking sense anyway so that's an issue for me um Stop, no science solution. So we have the stupid science solution, and we fly to not Tatooine. It's just another desert planet that happens to have water. It's a fine planet. I don't remember what it's called. Um, and, and we have this, this, <laughs> this is, and this is where the movie just straight jumps the shark. It's just straight, like, nope. So you have some stupid moments, like, uh, uh, Han putting his arm around Lando, Lando saying, I hate you, and Han saying, I know, which is an obvious contrived callback to I love you, I know. Um, which is stupid because the whole beauty of that line was it was organic improvised line by by Harrison Ford And the fact that you just wrote it in this super contrived way is dumb, and I don't like it um, Oh, we haven't even talked about oh, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> we have so much we have so much more to talk about guys um, So <laughs> the stupidest part of the movie. I'm getting really hot. I'm taking this jacket off I'm sorry. I don't know if you can see me like getting fucking red here and sweaty. It's this is this is a lot of work. This is a lot of work um 
so, Enfys Nest shows up, because of course, because it uh, turns out Therm Scissor Punch has been spying this whole time. Uh, and I'm, I'm, ha I'm actually, I'm pretty pleased that they didn't like, say, say his name in the movie, but if you, I didn't even realize who it was. I had to go back and be like, was Therm Scissor Punch even in the movie? And I saw a picture, I was like, oh, that's who it was. Um, so, we, of course, once again, it's so much fun to make badasses take off their helmets for no reason and just ruin the entire, you know, mystique of their character. Uh, so we have this. We have Emphis Ness in this big showdown that's gonna be cool. Oh, but wait, we have to have one mo moment to prove that Han has learned absolutely nothing and interrupts uh, Woody Harrelson's character with his whole big, you know, let me, this is my pretend plan! Whoa! -ha -ha -ha! Then it gets shot down just to make him look like an idiot! Because God forbid Han at any point in this movie should look competent or cool. You know, just maybe one or two flashes of brilliance when he's flying the Falcon and then the rest of the time, you just gotta look like a fucking pussy. Um, that's a problem for me. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell, I had some issues with this movie. So Emphis Ness pulls off her helmet, and Emphis Ness is a mixed race girl. And I mean girl, she's like 15 years old. And, and then the worst thing happens, the worst thing ever happens, right? We just abandon any attempt at allegory and metaphor and whatever right out the fucking window. And we have this nice little speech about how she's not actually a marauding badass who's super fucking cool. No, she is out here protecting the little people, quite literally, because Warwick Davis is one of their people anyway. Um, she is the defender of, of, of the oppressed. Yes, she is someone who goes around taking care of people who can't take care of themselves, defending the oppressed, and they call themselves allies. Are you fucking kidding me? Like, that's, that's not, you just literally took a thing that exists in life and it's like, here, we're doing this now. Because if you weren't sure, if you weren't sure before that the Empire re represents oppression and bad stuff in the world, and that the Rebellion represents the good and sticking up for those who need it, let's just write it the fuck out, and we'll show you a little band of misfits, and include, like, a person who's actually in the real world, it's just, I don't know, discriminating against, are midgets discriminated against? I don't fucking know. Maybe they are. Uh, Randy Newman in his song Short People definitely did that, but whatever. Um, that was, that was satire, guys. It's just like, right there, I'm like, I'm out, I'm hard fucking out. Every, anything I was gonna try to say, at that, up until that point, I was like, alright, my, I can understand someone watching this movie and liking this movie. If they don't give a shit about Star Wars and what it actually is and what it actually means, if they don't give a shit about Han Solo or the rape and bastardization of his character, I can understand someone liking this movie. You get to that point, you're like, what the fuck? What the actual fuck? Like, are the writers just the laziest fucking human beings in the fucking universe? Are they the stupidest, most untalented fucks ever to get into a writing room? Why? And after that, everything was just like nothing made sense at that point. It's like, oh, I'm gonna double cross you, and then double cross you, and double cross you, and double cross you, and double cross you, and double cross you. Blah, blah, blah. And the result of the play is Woody Harrelson walks off with the goods, and um, we have this little like shootout showdown between uh, Paul Bettany and Han Solo, where Amelia Clark is just kind of like, ah, we'll see what I'm gonna do right now. Um, and then in this completely pointless move, uh, stops him from killing Paul Bettany, like pointedly stops him so that she can kill him herself. Which doesn't make any sense, because we later find out her whole thing was, I'm gonna kill you and take over! Uh, she could have taken over just as easily if Han had killed him. That's, that's not, a, that's not a thing. This is not, we're not dealing with Sith. It's not like, oh, I had to take you, kill, and that's not even a thing anyway. None of it's a thing. Um, none of these things are things. Like, it's just, there's no reason for that, other than maybe she wanted to. I don't know. Um, and it's so obviously set him up, you know, and Han goes off on his Mary, and she, contacts Darth Maul, oh my god, um, because why just make a standalone movie that stands alone, you know, why, we have to know, we have to tie everything into everything, everything has to mean something, everything has to be relevant, everything has to be this whole much bigger thing, like, why, um, and god forbid we should actually make Darth Maul's eyes look scary, no, if you've seen the freeze frames, like, the googly eyes are, are, are real, that's just, it didn't look good, um, it did not, <laughs> Uh, it did not! No, we're not doing that. We're not going there. So, here, the one good thing, the one, one of two, uh, the two best moments in this movie, you have to wait the whole fucking time to get there. Uh, one, you have Woody Harrelson going on this little rant about how you should never trust people and whatnot, and is clearly about to shoot Han, and Han pulls out his gun midway through and just kills him. You don't actually see Han firing the shot, which kind of bugs me in a way, in a weird way. Like, you just see him get shot, and you're like, I guess Han did it. Um, but... Okay, we brought back, we, 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 we were doubling down, Han shot first. Thank you for acknowledging that, Disney. The one fucking thing. Thank you for giving me that one fucking thing. It does not make up for all of the rest of your goddamn crimes. But thank you for the one fucking thing. Um, 
And then the next thing that happens actually doesn't make sense, where where Enfys Nest is like, hey, come join the rebellion um, that we're starting right now, apparently. Which is like, okay, timeline-wise, I don't think that really works. I don't think that this rebellion started now and just only had about, like, nine-ish more years to blossom before it became the thing it was when later on happened. I feel like the rebellion's probably been around since the fall of the, of the Republic, but what do I know? Um, so, at this point, there's really no reason for Han not to? That seems actually, actually, based on his character, the most logical thing to happen. Because the thing that happens to his character all fucking movie is that people tell him he's the good guy. Everyone. Like, Amelia Clark and Woody Harrelson, you're such a good person. That makes you, you different from me and from me and from everyone else. You're a good person. No, he's fucking not! That's the whole thing is that he's not! And I'm sorry, just the whole, just the one shooting Woody Harrelson in obvious self-defense does not suddenly turn this yuppie little prick into a good fucking, into a bad person. You got a long ass way to go on that. So his whole turning down, helping out the rebellion, like the, the obvious move based on the character you have introduced us to and developed, the obvious move would have been like, yeah, I'm joining the rebellion, totally. That would have been the most obvious fucking move. And nope, no, 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 no. I'm just gonna go off and do my own thing because I'm just gonna wander around in the desert and it seems like, you know, going to Tatooine would be great. Like, whatever. No, no, fucking no, no. Uh, just no. Just all the no. Just, it doesn't make any sense. Um, it doesn't, it's just, it's not consistent with the character they've created. They created a character, and so that's the whole thing, is all this, this entire movie, Han doesn't develop, he doesn't grow, he just does the same stupid shit over and over and over and over and over, until the very, very end, when it seems like, oh, he's learned a few lessons, and then what, now I'm supposed to just believe and accept that he's turned into the character that I've always known and loved? Fuck no. No, he didn't earn that, he didn't earn any of that, he just stayed consistently himself, this yuppie little idealist, all movie, and what, now I'm supposed to just assume, like, well, we're not really gonna talk about that, we're not gonna really talk about how he turns into this toxic masculine character, because toxic masculinity, toxic masculinity is something we just wanna forget about, and just pretend like it doesn't happen. Fuck you. Han is a wonderful man, and I love him, and I love him exactly as he is, flaws and all. So fuck off, suck my dick, I will jizz force right in your face, because I don't give a fuck. I like my Han Solo as is, and that little bitch is not my Han Solo. Um... So then we get this little sort of almost epilogue scene where he finds Lando and he, without Lando knowing, takes his extra cheating cards and then wins the Millennium Falcon Fair and Square. The end, wrapped up with a nice little, neat little bow. So based on everything, that last scene, actually I think they did okay. I think that, that scene they did just fine. And then the movie's over, and you're like, well, that was dumb. Why couldn't the entire movie have just been that one scene? Because I might have been marginally okay with that. Uh, Chewbacca does tear someone's arms off, which is slightly gratifying, I do admit, early in the movie. But, okay, so things we need to talk about that we didn't finish and we didn't quite get to on this one. Um, tonally, the movie's all the fuck over the place. You can't decide if it's trying to break out and be its own thing and be its own little heist movie that happens to exist in the Star Wars galaxy. Um, or if it's trying to just be, like, again, everything has to mean something. It's all interwoven in Star Wars land. Dumb. Very dumb. But right now, let's talk about Lando. Let's talk about Lando, because... I was excited for Lando. I thought, of all the things, fuck everything else, Donald Glover's gonna nail this. He's gonna fucking nail this. He's gonna knock it out of the park. And that, at least, that, at the very least, would be fun to watch. So half the time, he had this weird accent. I'm not really sure what it was, sort of like this faux British thing that did not sit right on him at all. It did not sound natural. It did not sound organic. It didn't even sound like, it sounded like he was joking when he fucking did it and completely took you out of the character. And you're like, what the hell is that? All right, but all that aside, and this is a writing issue, I think Donald Glover did, did the best with what he was given, for the most part. Um... They wrote him like a dandy. They wrote him like a little, I care about my clothes, I'm not too pretty my dad. And again, this is, these are, this is, this is a young version of Lando, so I could get that he could be into nice things and having nice things, but he doesn't have to be this fucking little pussy where we see him like, uh, let me just dictate my life story. That's all I want to do right now. Like, seriously, I own 5,000 capes. Like, come on, you just, you made him into a fucking little dandy, and why? Um, and then the whole thing where, okay, so when they meet him, he's supposed to be like, it seems like 10 years older than Han and retired. That's not interesting. First of all, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, Han, Han and Lando are obviously the same age. Visually, in the trilogy, in this movie. Visually, clearly, and act, the way they act, very much the same age. Um, and then it's it's just, nobody, we, don't, we didn't come here to fucking see retired Lando. We saw retired Lando. And retired Lando, by the way, looks very different than the Lando in this movie. So that doesn't really make any sense there either. We want to see Lando, most feared badass smuggler in the galaxy. Um, which, by the way, they talk about, like, who's the most badass feared smuggler in the galaxy? Oh, by the way, he's retired. Like, What? Why? And he just comes out of retirement to do all this shit. Was the only reason for him to be retired so you had a way to contrive the Sabat game into that first scene? It didn't make any sense. None of it made any sense. He was horribly written. He did no service to the to the to the to the uh, original canon material. Like it just didn't. And there was no reason for him to be fucking pansexual either. I mean, if you you didn't even have to make that a thing. That didn't have to be a thing in order for him to be in love with a robot character. I mean, I don't think anybody judges in the Star Wars universe like people who fuck people of different races. There's so many different goddamn races. That's not a, that's not a thing. 
So, I guess robots just, you know, add that on there, whatever. Um, now let's talk about the female characters, because <laughs> Star Wars is all about the female characters. Um, uh, horrible. <laughs> again, once again, horrible. Uh, the best one, the by far best one, Tandy Newton, awesome, total badass, dies in the first, like, 20 minutes of the movie, just pff, gone, out. Because we can't have her, because she would be good at things. Uh, the would-be badass villain, as we said, 15-year-old little girl who's, who's just, you know the leader of the SJWs, apparently. Um, and then, and then you have, uh, L3, SJW extraordinaire, like, everyone I hated in college, like, literally everyone who bullied me and everyone else in college. Um, and then you have, uh, and you have Amelia Clark, Kira. Um, I just didn't understand her. I didn't understand her motivation at any point. And again, the lack of subtext. So this whole time, we, she's supposedly just playing Han, even though she kind of has some, like, lingering feelings for him, but not really. And, like, the timing of what she chooses to give his dice back is kind of weird. And and so the whole, like, it's just it's just not clear what she wants at any point. Until the very, very end, and even then, it's not really clear what she wants. Like, is that really what she wants? Because she's looking kind of wistfully out the window, so I don't know. Um... It just, it just didn't really make sense, and, and a lot of that, a lot of that, her, like, questionable motivation that was never, ever clear, obviously not clear throughout the entire film, stole a lot of the focus, and that's, I mean, that, the entire movie was just pull focus from Han, pull focus, who's gonna upstage him next, who's gonna, whose character's arc, whose character's story is gonna upstage this, this nobody character, this nobody, do, like, bumble along whatever character, which, who is Han Solo, and, okay. You guys have been with me this long, this these past 40 minutes, and I uh, we're gonna get a little real here. We're gonna get a little real, real talky here. Um, I I had a lot of trouble watching what they did to Han. In, in the, like, <laughs> why make it a Han Solo movie at this point? Why make it a Han Solo movie? Because all he does is run around and ask questions. He doesn't do anything. He gets upstaged by everyone else. And this is a thing for me. Like, <laughs> you can try. People have, oh, they're, they, they're sorry. I can't even talk right now. I can't even. I can't even English. Um, Han is a very important character to me, to my life, uh, and I mean that in so many ways, and people may think it's stupid, like, why do you care so much about Star Wars? Because Han Solo has always been there for me. Han Solo has been a role model for me. Han Solo, I, many times in my life, I'm, as you might have been able to glean from these videos, I'm a very emotional person. Um, and so sometimes I go into situations, difficult situations, where I have to have difficult conversations, and, and when I get overly emotional, I cry. That's a thing I do. And, and when I go into these, the thing I repeat in my head over and over again, so I don't, is Han Solo wouldn't cry. No, I'm doing it right now. Han Solo wouldn't fucking cry. Um, and, and, I, I wrote a fucking paper on this guy. Like, this is, I know this person so intimately, so well, more than, better than I know any character, because I spent so much time trying to be him. Uh, the happiest I've been in my life has been these past few years when I've rebuilt myself in the image that I want and I used Han Solo as my model. So I know who that character is. I know who that person is. And to watch Disney try to tell me, like, nope, this is Han Solo now. It's just... And I know that there are people, the people who decide to like it, you know, for whatever reason, who are going to watch it and be like, yeah, no, he's kind of Han Solo-ish. Like, I buy him. I mean, no one's going to be Harrison Ford, so I'll accept him. And that fucking hurts me, guys, right? That really fucking hurts because he's not, and he's never going to be. And I, I'm just, I'm so upset that I live in a world now where there are people who are going to insist he is. There are children who are going to grow up with this Han Solo first. There are children who are going to grow up thinking this is an acceptable Han Solo. There are kids who are one day going to say, I like Alden Ehrenreich's Han Solo better than Harrison Ford's. And that fucking kills me. That fucking destroys me. And I don't, I don't want to, I don't want that world. Ah! I just thank you guys for watching and for thank you guys for for being here and for watching these videos and creating uh, and helping me come become part of a community where these feelings are validated. Um, you guys are amazing for that. You people who don't think this is stupid um, and who understand where I'm coming from because Star Wars means as much to you as it does to me. So if you haven't seen it, guys, don't. Um, really don't. Like honestly, I thought I was just gonna watch it and be mad about it and yell about it and it would be cathartic, and it hurt me. Like as you can see, it fucking hurts. Um, because I, I didn't realize how devastating it was. What they what they were taking away from me. Um, when they made this, and, and now I do, and it fucking sucks. It fucking sucks. So, thanks for, thanks for going on this, thanks for going on this roller coaster with me. Um, in good news, I have a t-shirt. You may have heard me jizz force on someone's face in this video. If you haven't seen my other videos, that's the thing I say sometimes. And now you can get it on a t-shirt, guys! You can get your very own t-shirt with my face and the wonderful braised jizzing force all over the place. On the front, mindless entertainment. 
on the back. You can own it today. Uh, the link is below. That's super exciting. Uh, you guys should buy it and or check out my Patreon um, because I'm not monetized because YouTube is apparently has a backlog uh, uh, in the review process. So I've been waiting to get reviewed since January, which means I don't make any dollars for doing this, but I'd like to. So buy my t-shirt is what I'm saying. Uh, I poured my heart out for you on the internet. The least you can do is buy my fucking t-shirt. Um, and let me know if you guys didn't see it. Fucking good for you for, for being strong and not seeing it. Um, if you did see it, I want to know what you thought, obviously, always. Um, and, uh, yeah, just stay strong, Star Wars people. There's a, there's, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. I don't know what it is yet, but it's, it's there somewhere. We'll find it together. Nope, this is Han Solo now. It